perfect we're going to start now with the pack bed reactor we've seen the batch reactor molar equations and description operation we've also seen the CSTR which is the continuous steer tank reactor we've also seen the plug flow reactor and now it's time to finish with the pack bed reactor so let me give you a small description it takes into this reactor or this type of reactor you, you're, you're going to use heterogeneous reaction what does that mean Is that you're going to use a fluid and a solid in general fluid could be wa a liquid or a gas and you're going to pass them through a bed which is solid uh, it's ideal for catalyst bed reaction so if you need a catalyst you're going to probably need to fix that in one bed so yeah it's small drawing you have this reactor and you got your bed they pass through and they react now the description uh, we base our study in the reactors catalyst mass and uh, not as previous we have used the reactors volume but now we are going now to use the catalyst mass the good thing is a steady state operation so there's no accumulation no accumulation means no derivatives no derivatives means no uh, differential calculus or integrals so that's nice if there are gases, there is a pressure drop, but we are not going to see these right now. We're going to see it in the course, but we're going to see it later. And yeah, the concentration of product changes with length. So you put this, you had your pack bed here. And as they pass through the pack bed, they change their concentration. Similar to the plug flow reactor, but now we have a pack bed. So yeah, the operation is typically a clean catalyst is placed. So you place the catalytic here. The catalyst bed is fixed so it does not move as the fluid passes by. So if the fluid goes here, you're not going to steal catalyst or you're not going to move that bed. Uh, if it happens, it's not done correctly. And the inlet is open. Of course, you have the inlet and the fluid starts entering the reactor. The fluid interacts with the catalyst bed and they react in their, I don't know, depending on the type of bed or reactor, but you react it. And there is reactions happening and the product goes out. So the thing here is that sometimes the catalyst is saturated. So a catalyst, I don't know, maybe can only operate one kilogram per day or one ton per week, or I don't know, maybe it has this time of saturation. So once that happens, you need to take it away take away that saturation and in the meantime you can place another one here so that's one thing the other thing that may happen is that if you have I don't know maybe SO2 CO2 many of these gases that are corrosive you can poison those uh, catalysts and I mean not poison like literally poison but let's say you have 100 active sites and you are reacting A and B you need those sites but let's say you have a small quantity of C and C will not only take this uh, active site will destroy it or will stay there so as time passes by you're going to fill all those small spots active sites and A and B are no longer going to react there and since they not, don't react they go out and you're not going to have your reaction so we say that the catalyst is poison when material starts invading our active sites so what you're going to do this uh, you need to change the catalyst bed as well okay so we need to check out some of these rate of reactions I'm going to add this little thing here to the note that we're talking about the mass of the catalyst once again we're talking about mass uh, we're going to analyze this so let's consider rate of reaction was previously moles of A per volume per time but now let's consider this prima rate of reaction it's going to be same thing moles of A yeah we are talking about moles but now we're going to talk about mass of catalyst not much on reactor which makes sense because previously let's say a, PB, a PFR a plug flow reactor you analyze this volume so you got this volume but right now we got a pack bed we're going to analyze the pack bed and how we do that 
we could relate volume with density to the catalyst, but I think it's way easier to relate it to the mass. So we're going to do that. Now, rate of reaction times volume of the reactor will give you the moles of A per unit time that are being generated. Now, prima rate of reaction times mass of catalyst is going to give you exactly the same. So just take care, and when you see a prima, ignore the volumes, go to the masses. And it's time to apply our mass balance, uh, molar balance equations. Let's have this reactor, as you can see, it's inlet here, outlet here, your packed bed here, you have the catalyst here. So the total volume of the reactor is this, but the actual thing that is reacting is this part here. So let me do, as previously done, a analysis on this disk of catalyst bed. Cat catalyst bed. We got inlet, yes, outlet, yes. A rate of reaction or primary rate of reaction times the change in mass, and we have no accumulation. So once again, we get a similar equation of the PBR, not PFR, which is plug flow reactor, but we need to do this analysis now in mass. So we got it's exactly the same as the PFR, plug flow reactor. We got this disk, we got this flow evaluated at this initial quantity and we got this flow going out evaluated at this initial quantity plus the change in this catalyst change. So what do we do now? We force again the derivative. You have no doubts what we're doing. Go check out the previous video of the PFR plug flow reactor. We do the same thing. So we got inlet minus outlet plus the generation equals zero because there's no, uh, no accumulation. So what I'm going to do is divide by delta W. This one goes away. And this got like this. So that's why I got this one. Now, I'm going to pass this one here and I get this value here. Once again, if you remember the PFR, you're going to force that into a derivative and you get exactly, a, well not, not exactly, but it's very similar to that of the PFR only that we don't have volumes, we have uh, masses and this is prima, this is not prima so this is our master equation for a packed bed reactor just uh, let me tell you that this prima stands for mass of catalyst and this change of mass is, of course, the mass of catalyst. But this flow is exactly the same. Uh, one thing, if you wanted to keep uh, the derivative and there is no change in pressure, you will end up with a similar... Actually, let me write it here. T F and R A. This is the one of a PFR. And this is the PBR. So the packed bed is essentially weight. There's weight. And here it implies weight. And the PFR is volume. And this implies volumes. So, yeah, just remember since we're using gases, there will be a pressure loss. So we're going to deal with that in further chapters. But by right now, just take in mind that this is our master equation. And the next video, we're going to change flows to concentrations, which is a very uh, exciting uh, topic keep watching the videos and please don't continue if you don't know how do we got all the equations on the molar balance what's up guys it's me chemical engineering guy so if you like the video why not push the like button it really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. 
subscribing to the channel is totally free guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.